Hey everybody, it's Kate Richberg and welcome to Free Tip Friday after a two week hiatus. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad to be back with you guys after the excitement of the Tucson Gem Shows. Uh, we've got so much to talk about today. I'm going to pull everybody up or I'm going to pull this broadcast up on my phone here so I can see, make sure that we're on and make sure that I can see your comments. And there, I think I'm there. Let's see. There we go. Oops. So and you can also today. hear me talk. Let me mute this down. There we go. All right. I'm thinking I'm seeing everybody. Except on my phone, I'm seeing you all sideways. Let me move this over so I can see everyone. Alrighty. Hey, everybody. Look, everybody's here. That's awesome. Awesome. Let me make sure I can see everybody here also on our feed. Great. All right. I'm getting everybody in loud and clear. Um, I hope you guys can hear me okay. I still have a little bit of a voice thing happening from uh, from this little touch of a cold that I've got, but I am so on the mend, so it's all good. Well, it's great to see everybody. Um, looks like we're having some snowy weather here from some of you um, here in the wonderful Bay Area of California. Um, whoops, I'm talking into <laughs> I'm talking into the iPad over here. I should be talking to you guys over here. Let me try that again. Um, but here in California, it's super sunny. Um, we're having kind of some unseasonably spring-like weather right now in, um, in the Bay Area, so it's a beautiful day. So it's a beautiful day for beating. So excellent. Um, it's been two weeks since I've done my own free tip Friday, so I feel like I'm so out of practice. So thanks for uh, hanging in hanging in there with me. Um, today, we're going to make, I think, a really fun project uh, that I think you guys are going to love. You know, in our Facebook group, uh, we have had some talk about, you know, springtime's coming up, it's time for craft fair time. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, I did uh, what's called the goddess bracelet, which was really cool. Um, and I think the piece that I'm going to do today, it's a float kind of necklace, it could also be a bracelet, is also a great one for craft fair season. It's quick, I think it has a lot of, uh, like what we like to say, curb appeal, um, and I think it'll be fun for you. So, um, let me see who's on. No, Faye Brandwin is not behind the camera, she's working hard, I'm doing the camera and the talent today. So uh, you guys have to bear with me here. Free Tip Friday, I always fly solo. The brand one will probably come in and take some photos a little bit later as I look over to her at the side. Um, thanks, my mom's on. Hey, Ma, thanks. I'm look, feeling good. And my dearest, dearest best friend in the whole world, Christine, she's on. Hi, Chris. It's good to see you. Um, I wish we were being together today instead of you being down south and me being up here, but hopefully soon. Um, Yes, so that's the story. Um, the, the earrings I'm wearing, Kathy, you can see, these are ones that I made. I'll hold them up close so you guys can see. These are a piece, an earring uh, that I'm doing. I taught it, um, or something similar to it, uh, the Tucson shows. It's some, um, it's a coin bead that I made out of wheat pennies and stuff. So it was kind of a fun, or it might be a little out of, out of focus there. I might have been holding it a little too close. Um, anyway, so that's the story there. That's what I'm wearing. That's what, oh, my hand looks huge <laughs> in, the, in the thing. That's funny. Um, okay, so, oh my gosh, we've got people from all over Northern Ireland, and hello from Istanbul. Hello from all over the U.S. and Canada. It's great to have everybody. It's great to spend this Friday time with you. And there's our Gita from Denmark. Fantastic. We're all at the bead table. Well, let me start off, I'm going to start off kind of up here uh, face-wise, I'm going to talk about measuring for this necklace, and then I'm going to move the camera down onto the beads so you guys can see what I'm making. So first, for this um, project, for this necklace project, I'm going to, I've got my tape measure here, and I just wanted to show you how I just jump in and measure, and so I'm going to make this necklace kind of 
it's going to be multiple strands, maybe five to seven strands, I'm not sure yet. Um, and it's going to lay for me somewhere here. Uh, so I'm going to just take this measurement and then we're going to look at it and see uh, what we've got. 22 inches on the nose, okay? So when I'm stringing uh, a necklace and I'm not really sure what the outcome is going to be, I'm going to add maybe two, maybe three inches so I've got enough room to close and crimp. The crimps that I'm going to use on this one, it's going to be a little bit different um, this time, and I'll show you you guys that um, shortly. So I'm going to mostly cut my Softlex maybe about 25 inches or so, and then that'll give me enough room to move around, to have a little bit of movement. So let me go ahead and move the camera. So bear with me, it's going to be a little rocky while I move this camera, but You'll get a little look of the office and stuff here, which is always exciting. Um, but again, bear with me. Since I am working the camera alone here today, it's again always exciting. Let's get that in focus. Let me tighten things up a little bit. Sorry again, sorry about that. Let's see if I can get everything tight and in a good position for you guys to see. And I'll move things maybe over just a little bit. All right, there we go. Let's see here are my hands, my hands are here. Let me move all my equipment around so you guys can see what's shaking. This is pretty good, tell me what you guys think. You guys can kind of see what's going on here, I think, pretty well. Let me actually move this up a little bit so I'm a little bit higher and then I can zoom in as needed. There we go. Ta-da. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Off a little bit of an angle, but not too bad, I think. Okay. All righty. So, yeah, here we are. Yes and yes, good and good. All right, so as you can see, you guys, what I'm gonna be using today, let me go over it a little bit and show you guys what I've got going on and then we'll jump into the project. So I'm gonna be using Softflex today. And Softflex, for those of you guys who have used this before, and you, um, we sell all of the Softflex, or a lot of Softflex projects, not all of them, but a lot of Softflex projects on our website at beadshop.com. Um, but we've also had a few questions about the different Softflexes, Softflex versus Soft Touch, which I want to talk about very briefly. Um, and then we'll also talk about some of the colors. Because colors really come into play with this. And Gita is already on her linking. Thank you, Gita, on a Friday night in Denmark, linking for us a half a world away, which is just fantastic. I love it. So first, let's talk a little bit um, about uh, the stringing material and then I'll talk about what we'll actually be using. We're going to use the, um, the monthly mix and some other stuff here. But let's talk um, about um, the stringing materials. Soft touch versus soft flex. Now soft flex is the original um, configuration of the soft flex wire and what we use here most of the time uh, at Bead Shop is the Softflex Fine beading wire. And the fine, you can see the diameter and the size. I'll get a little closer to you guys so you can see it. The diameter, it's a 1.4, uh, or uh, 0.014 inches, sorry about that, um, or 0.36 millimeter. This is fantastic for, I don't know, a multitude of projects. I find that the 0. Point, uh, 0.014 is the most versatile, okay, and it's what I use most of the time. Now, we also have soft touch, and soft touch is meant to be a little more, um, well, soft and drapey, I guess, right? So it acts a little more like thread, but it's still wire. It's a nylon-coated wire cable, just like the Softflex. 
but we carry the soft touch in a thinner diameter and it's in the point zero one zero or the point twenty five millimeter and we call that one very fine. I use this if I'm stringing really fine gemstones. These are some of our iolites, our faceted gemstones, our iolites. Now these iolites, it's hard to see. Let me uh, kind of zoom in a little bit more tightly so you guys can see this. These iolite stones that I have here, the holes, you guys, are super small. Super small. Um, and so even stringing on this regular Softlex might be a little bit small for that. And if you use thread, like we could probably get KO thread through these, but KO, you guys, wouldn't be heavy enough. KO thread would just break. Even Fireline, I think, is a little too thin or not enough, um, not enough strength for something like this. So this .010 soft touch, perfect for that, um, for that size hole. As well as, these have holes that are a little bit larger. These are azure hematite. They would also work on the soft flex right here. But if you're using, um, mixing these strands, these really small ones, this azure hematite and this iolite, um, you need something that's a pretty small diameter. So that's when I use soft touch. Okay. So for this project, however, let me zoom back out. Let me put these to the side. Uh, for this project, we are going to actually use the soft flex extreme. And my buddy Christine will remember when we owned our bead store in San Francisco, Bedissimo, we would do a an amazing wedding necklace with this soft flex extreme. And the extreme comes in uh, it's the point zero one four uh, and it has the 24 karat gold plated wires um, and it just makes such a nice showing. The extreme also comes in the sterling silver, the 925 sterling silver. So when you're doing floats um, with soft flex and having soft flex exposed, both of these I think are perfect um, for having those floats that that thread exposed. Now Danielle, you just asked are special crimps needed for the very fine and that question is the answer to that question is yes, I use the one millimeter crimps or the small ones for this. Um, they hold uh, a lot better for that. Okay, so Softflex also comes in some other really great colors to expose uh, the thread for kind of floats or, or thread exposed necklaces. This one is the bronze. I think it's the bronze. Right, let me double check and see. Yep, it's the bronze right there. And then this one's the copper. And you can see, whoops, that gold one just fell right out of my hand. Come back here. So you can see they have some really nice metallic colors, and you can certainly mix these colors if you wanted to as well. Um, they'll, they all look really, really nice. Uh, but today what I'm going to use um, is I'm going to use this gold. Uh, can I see them? Yeah, I can see your links, Gita. Is anyone else having trouble seeing Gita's links? You know, Gita, you and I are going to have to have a convo um, about this. Maybe I'll have to make you an admin or something about this so I can make sure that you guys, um, that you don't get this spam linking. I think this is a new thing. You know, Facebook always has something new. So I can see your links just fine. Um, but let's make sure that everybody, okay, great, everybody, you're seeing them, great, thumbs up. So, um, who knows, that's just crazy, crazy talk with that. So, we'll solve for that, for sure. Um, okay, so, let's get started on this necklace project. Um, what we're going to be doing is, we're going to be working with that monthly mix, and I'm going to start off by, let me make this a little bit bigger, okay, there we go. Um, 
I'm going to start off by grabbing our monthly mix. This is our monthly mix called New Love. It's the monthly mix for February. A Jen, a Jen product here. She did a great job with this. And I'm going to see maybe, I don't know, I'm going to pour some out. And our monthly mixes at Bead Shop, I'm just going to pour them all out. They're a seed bead mix with the Mayuki seed beads, the Japanese seed beads. Um, and we usually have a bunch of different sizes. Let me get in a little bit tighter so you guys can see that. We have some six aughts, which are these big ones, these here. We've got some eight aughts, which are the ones that are not quite so big, <laughs> these guys over here. And then we've got some 11 aughts, which are the smaller ones. And all of those guys will work on the Softflex. And I thought that the Softflex Extreme, we could use it in the Sterling, which is really cool, this guy here. Or we could use it in the gold. And I thought that the gold, I thought I would use the gold today, which would be good. Tell us about your bracelet. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you about the jewelry I'm wearing uh, at the end of the broadcast. How does that sound? Does that work? I am wearing some of my favorite bracelets um, today for sure. Uh, okay, so here are my seed beads. Now let me wide, let me make this a little bit bigger here so you guys can see. The findings that I have, it's all stuff that we carry here at Bead Shop. Now, a couple of ways that you could close your Softlex, right? Traditionally, let me grab these here. Traditionally, with Softlex, we could just crimp, right? Use a crimp tube at the end and um, loop them over a clasp. There's some crimps right there. We could loop them over a clasp like this uh, plain and simple toggle. Get in a little bit tighter so you guys can see there. Uh, this is a 2x2 two two crimp that I use for this .014, okay. Um, but we also have, and I think it's something that maybe gets overlooked that I wanted to share with you guys. These are our um, oval crimps, and they come in a 2 millimeter and I think a 1.5 maybe. They come in two sizes. Um, I chose this larger size, but let me also grab one of those smaller ones so you guys can see the difference, because we might use that smaller one, actually. Let me grab it. Here it is. This is the 1.5, and it just depends on how many strands we're going to use. So let me show you the difference on that, right? Uh, let me go here. Here's the 2 mil. Put that in camera range. And here's the 1.5. So depending on how many strands we're going to use, that would determine which crimp you need. Um, the Softflex Econoflex. You know, I have. Uh, Softflex actually sent us some of the Econoflex. I thought it was fine. I, uh, You know... Stringing materials to me are so, it's like almost the most important choice you're making in your piece. So, in all honesty, I don't think the Econoflex is that um, much less expensive. So, I just go for the regular Softflex. The Econoflex to me was a little stiffer and didn't drape quite as nicely. Um, but I think it's a personal choice. But for me, I didn't love it as much. In a pinch, I would totally use it. Um, but if I had Softflex around, that's what I'd use. So how many strands in the 1.5? Well, uh, I don't know. Let's try that out. Here's one strand. So my guess is we'll probably use that 1.5 uh, here. Because see, that just that one single strand how it doesn't take much room in that 1.5, okay? So I'm going to um, cut my first strand here, and I'm going to cut it at, what did I say, 25 inches, right? 
So I'm going to cut 25 and I will cut 1, 2, 3. This is just how I do it, you guys. Four, four strands and five. Do I have enough? Oh, I don't. Oh, I do. I do have enough for five. This was an opened one. And then I use to cut, I just go ahead and use my wire cutter to cut that. And I'm going to cut all of these strands. So I've got five. Okay. So, uh, okay. So here's my, here's my strands. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see the whole thing. Let me get these random strands out of the way. There we go. So here's all my five, and I'll go ahead and I'll cut these here. Now, what we could do is I could just come in and um, cut, uh, tape all these guys down if I wanted to tape them, or I could use, I think I bought some, um, little, what are these things called? Bead stoppers, right? The bead stopper, I could just come in and put each of these strands on the ends, right? Like that. And yeah, these oval crimps, as you guys are observing, these oval crimps, traditionally we use these oval crimps for leather. But I think they'll crimp just fine for soft flex. We're going to see. That's what the fun of Free Tip Friday, as you guys, veterans who haven't seen Free Tip, or who have seen Free Tip Friday, know that Free Tip Friday, I fly a little more by the seat of my pants. Sometimes it comes to bite me in the you-know-where, but sometimes we make great discoveries. So... <laughs> So you never know. Let me make these just go up a little bit more. There we go. So I've got my bead stopper with all my strands in there. All my strands, my five strands. And now I'm going to kind of put this aside for the moment here. And you can see the rest of the stuff. So if I were going to use this toggle, I, I could. I could attach this toggle with a jump ring to the end of my clasp, or end of my oval crimp. Um, I could do that with a jump ring. We could also, though, if you guys are making these for sale and you're not really sure about the length, we can attach this to some chain uh, with that same um, jump ring. That's a five millimeter jump ring. And then on the other side, we could use this lobster claw and this lobster claw could come in anywhere on that chain link to make this piece adjustable. Now you could also do on the end some kind of little wire wrap. I've used our, I think this is called blank slate or clean slate maybe it's called, um, this little uh, charm but you could do a little wire wrap bead whatever you wanted to do on the end. Okay, so but we'll get to that in a minute. So my next thing, if this is five strands, I'm going to go ahead with my pile of beads and I'm going to divide these into sort of five sort of equal piles. Make that a little bit bigger. I'm using my triangle trays for this and I'm not paying much attention to seeing if the beads are equally dispersed, if they're equal in size, if they're, I don't know, whatever. I'm just, I'm just dividing them into little piles, okay? There are my piles, all right? So uh, then I'm going to get my strands, I'm going to get a strand, and we're going to string it. We're going to string it up. And I'm not going to really worry about uh, the order I'm stringing it in or how or anything. I'm just going to do it, right? Don't think about it. Think about, think about what your plans are for the weekend instead. Like, I'm going to be at my studio making stuff and 
my husband and I are going to go to a fun event up in the city. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff this weekend because it's the weekend. It's Friday. So Softflex doesn't need a needle, right? Um, you do want to make sure, though, that you get a nice um, clean cut on the end so you can string really, really fast. And even those 11 knots fit on here really nicely. Um, questions so far? Oh, yay, there's Emily just joined. Hey, Em, how are you? I hope you're feeling okay. I know Emily started to come down with her post Tucson cold. It's always inevitable that that happens after the Tucson gem shows. I think. You know, the whole world gathers in Tucson, so the whole world's germs gather in Tucson, too. Let's go ahead and keep stringing these on, and we'll take a look at what we've got in a minute. Okay, so I, now would be a great time if you guys have some particular questions about the Softflex or about some closure that I can address while I'm stringing. I would be happy to do that. If not, we'll just continue. It'll be like watching paint dry here as I do some stringing. I want to make sure that I'm in view of the camera. And you can also see here, you guys, you can see what I've strung already. Um, it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. You have to trust this mix, honestly, I think. You know, it's the mix, I think, that really... Um, you just gotta, you know, say, hey, I've made a pretty bead mix. I'm just gonna put it on the strand and I'm gonna trust that it looks all right, right? So we'll get a few more on there. Okay. And Sharon, yes, I'm using the Softflex Extreme and it's the Softflex Extreme, the 24 karat gold, and it's the fine, the point zero one four. And it looks like Sarah Oler from Softflex, our Softflex friends have joined us, which is awesome. So, um, Sarah knows that Bead Shop is a super big fan of our soft, of the Softflex products. So I'm going to move that little pile over here because that's the one I've used so far. Um, and I'm going to start in this other pile. So Trish, you have a question about how many strands, depending on the crimps, do you think it's safe to crimp together? That's an excellent question. So I think in this point, or this two millimeter crimp that I've got here, this guy, let me make this a little bit bigger, this guy, I would crimp probably up to three strands, I think, I've gotten through that crimp. And in the three millimeter, probably maybe even up to five strands, because remember you have to go up and back through. The thing that you need to think about when you are crimping with Softflex, you want to make sure that your Softflex is all laying side by side and not crossed up and crinkled up underneath the crimp tube. I think that's the main reason, or the main thing to really take a look at. Because as you're crimping, if you're crimping your soft flex and it's all, you know, like one on top of the other, you're going to crimp and there's going to be space in that crimp tube. That space equals pulled out strands, at least in my book it has, right? So um, that space is really minimized the more you can line up that soft flex bring it back through and back over and still have it in that lineup so that's my um, that's my feeling I don't know Sarah if you have any other insight to that but that in my 25 years of working um, with soft flex um, that has really been my um, my experience with it. So, so we're coming along and we can see this is our second pile. 
So let's move to our third pile. I'm doing a little bit of volcanoing here like Emily does, just shoving that needle through my pile and getting some beads right on there, not even paying attention, right? Okay, there we go. So now let's move to our second strand, or our third strand we're at. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do this. There we go. That one's in. Okay. So now we've got two strands. And see how these two strands, they're just kind of kind of laying there. Kind of fun, right? So let's, that's my second pile. I'll move it over there. And we'll go to, I think this is our third pile. At least I hope that was my third pile. I don't know. Let's make sure. Now, one of the things when I was talking about this free tip Friday with Karen yesterday, we were kind of troubleshooting. I was casting around for people to give me some ideas for free tip Friday. Karen showed me a couple of ideas that she was thinking about with designing. And what she came up with, and I want to try it with this strand, is it was something like this, but she brought the strands together under a single bead. So let me do that. Bigger volcanoes. Yeah, I know, Em, you like giant volcanoes of beads, but I needed five piles. So now I've got Now I've got my little strands here, these two. So let's bring these together under, I don't know, under a bead. So I'm gonna, let me make this a little bit tighter and let me make sure that I don't, um, I'm gonna bring it under this six ot. There we go, can you see how those kind of now come together under that one. So let me string on a few more. Right. Again, this is from pile number three. Crimp too heavily and cut. Let's see, Robin, I'm reading your piece. Yep, yeah, you really want to make sure that you don't crimp this too tightly though I think also maybe the type of crimps that you have may also come into play a little bit here um, I use the 2x2 two two crimps for this with a heavy wall and they seem to work but again when we're working with our jewelry anytime we're making jewelry we want to make sure that we're doing it with the touch of a jewelry maker and not someone who is putting a roof on a house, right? <laughs> we don't want to be too heavy handed with that. So now I just chose in my first strand a place where they kind of all came together as well. Can we see that? It's kind of hard to see. So I had it intersect here intersect here with that strand and now maybe I'll string up this strand and have it intersect I don't know somewhere else but I'm gonna cut this soft flex piece is a little funny so I'm gonna cut that off to make it a little bit easier all right Em we'll see you on Wednesday thanks for joining us on your break we appreciate it I'll probably talk to you this weekend, I'm sure. Someone posted in the group yesterday, in our Facebook group, Bead Shop, the Bead Table, um, that they, and I can't remember who it was, that you were watching the figure skating, the Olympics figure skating, and you were totally inspired by the costumes were so pretty and sparkly. It's a great way to get some inspiration um, for some necklaces. You know, I used to do that too. Uh, Oscar night is coming up. The Academy Awards are coming up here in the States. And I used to, and maybe I'll do it again. 
I used to get my beads out and string a necklace that would be worthy of the red carpet for the Academy Awards, and I would string it during the Academy Awards as my inspiration. So that's always kind of fun, I think. It was kind of, it's kind of a fun thing um, to, you know, do some live stringing, some live work right as, um, as you're watching something. So you can see here I've kind of brought a few things through. Maybe I'll leave these, these over here a little loose. I don't know. Again, this is kind of designing on the fly. Let me go here to this other pile. And you can also decide, you guys, um, I'm going to get a few beads on all of these. You can also decide how many beads you like. I think that these five equal piles will make sure that I don't um, overstring on one strand and use all my beads and then not have any beads for other strands. Let me put some of these big ones on. I haven't done that on this strand. There we go. You know, it's a good question about the wire cutter. Um, Jennifer, Jennifer is asking what wire cutter or cutter should we use for soft flex. I like a flush cutter for sure. Um, and what I do when I cut, I'm using our friend the Zeron, um, the Zeron Maxi Share cutter. Um, and the Zeron Maxi Share, the way that this is made, this cutter, and it's hard to see. Let me see if I can point it right at you guys so you can kind of see it. Let me see if you can see. If I turn it, it's still a little hard to see. But one side of this Max Shear cutter is higher than the other. This higher end and this lower end create kind of a cross shear action. So it keeps this cutter really super nice and sharp, okay? And so um, wires and things that might ordinarily dull your cutters um, don't really affect this as much because you've got that bypass action there. So I cut wires up to, I don't know, even 10 gauge with this a lot, uh, really heavy. Um, and I found that the Softflex wire, it has a stainless steel wire on the inside. Well, in this case, this is a gold plate wire, um, but the regular Softflex has those stainless steel wires. I also never cut with the tip. I try and come back to the rear of the cutter and cut my soft flex. Um, and that really, I think that really helps. Okay, so there's that cut off there. I think it's that flush cutter though that really helps you get a good clean cut. So you can see I've got my threads, my strands here. Let me get one more on this. And then um, My five piles are all kind of coming together, aren't they? I've kind of lost track, but that's okay. I can always re re uh, balance these piles later as I need to. Then we're going to go ahead and put um, put the clasp on the end. Yeah, and I love these cutters. I've been using these for so many years and the ones that are in my studio and the ones that my students use, um, they really, really hold up. And remember that 10 gauge is all soft wire, but I use it for copper um, and for sterling and sometimes for brass. Brass really is a little bit harder, so I may go down to 12 gauge there. But again, not using the tip of the plier and cutting more in the rear of the plier really makes a difference for the life of your cutter. So, and they're also really affordable. You know, they're not super, super spendy. So, um, even if they do have a little accident with them, like you cut uh, your memory wire with them, which you wouldn't want to do, you want to keep your memory wire cutters for that, um, they're not a million dollars to replace. Um, the Softflex color, Diane, uh, that I'm using, I'm using the Softflex Extreme in the 24 karat gold. Um, but any of the Softflex colors um, might be nice. Um, you know, Trish, on your cutter, what you could do, and what I've done in the past, and it just depends on what, what you have um, at home, if you do have a nick, 
you could use even a nail file and file that nick. I'm not going to actually file on these because these are in good shape. But you could file in one direction, file towards the nick, and it will really help to um, take that nick, at least the, the raised part of that nick, out of, your, um, out of the head of your plier. And then you can cut, you can turn it, and you can uh, do it in the other direction as well. Yes, yeah, Softflex also carries uh, cutters for, particularly for Softflex, which are also great. Unfortunately, we have to make some choices about which cutters we carry, um, and so um, we're trying to cover all the bases with these Zerons. Um, but those are great. The quality is great. Um, I've used them before, and I like those as well. Let me get some tape. Let me holler out. Is anybody in fulfillment that can grab me the tape just real quick? Please and thank you. Um, because I'm going to take off these little ends, these little closures. Um, and no, I guess there's no one in fulfillment. So hang on, let me get it. Oh, tape? Do you mind this brand one? Just regular, uh, regular scotch tape. Oh, sure. I need someone's scotch tape holder. Brand one to the rescue. No, nope, just the tape. Thanks, Bran. All right, so I'm going to take these uh, closures off the end, and I'm going to tape them all up like this, because as we know, the bead's natural habitat is on the floor. So if I take it out of the bead thing, the little bead holder, I'm going to do this, okay? And I'm going to take all of these off, and I'm going to slide everything down, and do that. The one thing, you guys, that you don't want to cut this soft flex with is with scissors, right? Um, it'll really, it will wreck your scissors, because it's wire under there, so make sure and use a wire cutter and not scissors, okay? There we go. Let's get these all, let me zoom all the way out so we can kind of come up and see how all of our little strands are looking on here. And this still needs a little more work. I'm going to put all of my piles together to kind of get everything out of the way. But I can go ahead and redistribute those later as I work. Okay. Just like that. There's my pile right there. Okay. So here's what I've got. My little strung piece. And you can see this also looks nice. This may be plenty of, um, of seed beads, you know, for the necklace. Maybe I'd fill it in a little bit more. But the whole point of this is to kind of have these beads kind of float around um, on your piece. And yes, Margaret, I think as a bracelet, it would also look fantastic. Let's bring this over and just see if I audition it on my wrist. You can see there's a lot of movement and it's kind of fun. It would make a great uh, piece for brides, great piece for spring, um, and it would, I think, also make a great mixed metal piece if you wanted to throw some sterling, let me grab the silver in there, um, the silver in there, how fun would that be with kind of a silver and gold kind of a look if you're into mixed metals? I think that would work. So let me go ahead and close this thing off. We've been chatting a lot today. So... But I've missed you guys. I missed you guys the last two free tip Fridays, so we had to catch up, right? Let's check and see this .0 or the the um, 1.5 millimeter oval crimp. Let me make sure I get here in the in the center. I'm going to take off my tape really carefully, and on this side, I'm not so worried about my soft flex, you know, or about measuring. I'll take that measurement on the other side. Get in a little bit tighter so you guys can see. Um, I'm going to make sure that everything's all lined up together. Now, if I wanted to, I guess, I know you guys are all thinking in your heads, glue, no glue? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I don't know the answer to that, really. Let me see. Let me get some... You stay there. Don't go 
further. Uh, let me get some hypo cement. I don't know. I don't know if glue would really help. I guess it won't hurt. I'm just going to put a little bit there. Let's try it. Because I know that's what you guys were thinking. You were thinking glue. So, and I'm going to get a, a toothpick here. Whoops, one of those wanted to go in there already. I'm going to get a toothpick. Maybe I'll put a little bit of glue on the inside of that. Not a lot. A little glue goes a long way. Okay. I don't want it to come all the way around and out. Um, yeah, Beth, I've got a little touch of the cold, but nothing that can stop me. I'm doing all right. I got this. I'm going to put that aside. Make sure that I don't have too much glue and stuff on the end here. So now my ends, my ends got a little bit of glue and they're a little funny. So I'm going to re, um, recut. Why not the zap? Well, Anna, let me tell you to be honest. The hypo tube is what I had sitting right here. So that's what I used. Um, I could use zap for sure. Uh, they would probably work both as well. Um, so I might have put zap had I had it, but I don't know. I like, maybe I wanted, the zap glue has a tendency to be a little um, thicker. So I think I wanted something that maybe was a little thinner for this particular project for no other reason than that's what felt right. Okay, so you can see I put the ends in and I can feel that they've come up, it's kind of hard for you to see, but they've come up all the way, let me get this glue out of the way so I don't have a little disaster, I can feel that they've come up all the way up into the crimp and if I turn it, can you guys see how my soft flex is straight side by side, right? They're not all crinkly one on top of the other. So that's given me some room. So now I've also kind of delayed a little bit to give that hypo cement a little time to set up. Okay, so I can feel that that hypo cement is kind of grabbing onto those strands there. And again, I could use zap. I don't know. It's really, it's because the hypo tube was sitting right here next to me, which is why I grabbed it. Now, here comes the crimping. Now, we're going to crimp with the courage of our convictions, right? We're not going to worry about it too much. We're just going to come in with our, and I want to get into position so you guys can see this. I'm going to come in with my chain nose, pushing that soft flex up into the crimp while I'm doing this. And I'm really going to crimp it like I mean it, but I'm going to do repeated, um, repeated crimps. Uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to um, mar the surface of my crimp, so let me put a little tape over it so I don't mark it. And then let me get in there. Can you guys see that? Whoops. I want to get in there and I want to crimp it. I also, if I was in my studio, I might use, instead of this tape, I might use, um, I might use painter's tape. Let me see. Nope, that's coming out. Ah, that was a, that wasn't such a brilliant idea. Let me get in there. Let me try this again. That is the fun of Free Tip Friday and experimentation. But I really want to be careful not to mar my I'm going to give this another I can feel that glue is really doing its job. You know, the nylon jaw I could try the nylon jaw pliers. I haven't crimped this so 
far beyond that I can't get these in there. I try the nylon jaw, but I feel like the nylon jaw will just slide off of these. So let me try this again really carefully without the tape. I think painter's tape might be better. Let me really get in there. There we go. You gotta get a little bit of a grip on these oval crimps before they flatten. And I'll show you, there we go. That's really, can you see? Let me show you on the side if I'm in the frame. See how you can see that little, there's like a little mountain, a little tooth there. You get in there. That little tooth is what pushes that crimp closed and holds everything in place. So maybe your question, Anna, earlier about the zap glue, maybe zap would have been a better choice because it would have filled things in a little bit more. Let me see, I'm going to pull this. Yeah, that's, that's staying in there pretty well. Also, I think, I've got a little bit of gum on here from the tape that I can get off. Also, I think um, a few more strands would also work on this. I'm going to take it out of frame just real quick for a second, you guys. Get a little closer to my eyes so I can see this when I close it. Because I can't reach and see at the same time. There we go. A nice, tight tight crimp. Back and forth, I'm going back and forth over the crimp to really make sure it's nice and flat. There we go. Let me show you guys here real quick. Anna, you're confused about the two glues. Well, let me grab, let me see if I can grab a zap. Do I have a zap in here? If I don't, if I don't, I'll grab one. Let me grab one. Let me see. Let me grab it. Here we go. I've got some zap. Now, since we have time, since we're in it, well, let's be in it to win it, right? So, let me get my glue thing back here. And then we'll revisit this clasp in a second. Here's the glue. And I think what this also needs maybe is maybe one or two more strands. But we'll see. We'll see. Here's my little my little bag. This is a brand new zap glue that I pulled out. Now the zap glue is a gel. Okay, and the hypo isn't, it's runnier, okay, right, this one here. So let me, let me kind of go really tight in, this is a brand new one, so I'm just going to open it up, I'm going to pierce it with the lid. More Softflex colors. Joyce is asking, are we going to be selling more Softflex colors? Uh, I think so. Um, right now, we have a lot of the metallics and stuff. They have such beautiful, um, they've got a beautiful green. I think it's called tourmaline. They've got so many beautiful colors. So I'd love to add some more. Um, and we'll see when we do some more product reviews about what we're going to add. But I'd love to carry some more. So can you see how when I extrude this zap how it stays kind of in a little pile let me get really even tighter on that can you see that with the hypo let me extrude a little bit more of this out here's the hypo cement I'm going to put it right next to it that hypo as I extrude this out. See how it makes more of a puddle? Right? So it's not as thick. So the zap glue, it also has this little pin in there that's kind of a 
beast to get back in there. There we go. Okay. Let me get another toothpick. We can see our zap glue here, how it's really, how it's kind of like in a little bundle, right? It's really, and it doesn't run. Our hypo cement, it's a lot runnier, right? So the hypo cement I use when I am gluing at the end of knots, like if I'm gluing a knot that goes in an end tip, or if I'm gluing the ends of thread to keep those knots done. Anytime I want a little more flexibility with the thread, right? The zap, yeah, like Tammy's saying here, the zap is thicker, so it's a little bit easier to use and stays where you put it, okay? So I think that maybe that zap gel might be a better choice with this oval crimp, and I'm gonna try it again. You guys have also mentioned E6000. Okay, look what I happen to have here. I happen to have a tube of E6000. And these this E6000, let me show you a little, I've got a little, this demo is going totally off the rails today, you guys. Um, but I want to show you what I've used that E6000 for. Um, and I think, I think, if I have it here, I think you guys are going to like it. We have a new project and a new product that's coming out in a few weeks. Um, and this is why we're going to add E6000. We have a little, see that cute little bottle? We have that little bottle, um, and I needed a good glue to glue like metal to glass. And we tried the hypo cement. And it wasn't, as my mom said, viscosity. It wasn't viscous enough to hang on to this bottle top and have it dry securely. What the zap was, I think the zap had too many fumes. And when we tried it, it um, smoked the glass. So the glass was kind of, um, it, it had a, well, you know, a, what am I trying to say? It, it etched it kind of so it was no longer clear. So we tried the E6000, and the E6000 uh, is perfect for this. So anytime you want to um, glue or bond to, I'm going to open this up and put a, put a little thing there. You want to bond two pieces together. The E6000 kind of falls in the middle, frosty. That's the word I was looking for, Sharon. Thank you. It frosted the glass, exactly. You can see it is still kind of viscous, but it's a little runnier than the zap. Okay, so it got right in there. I just put some in the top of the bottle with a little uh, toothpick and pushed it on and let it sit 24 hours, and now this lid is never, ever coming off. So this is coming up in a few weeks, this cute little bottle project, and we're adding these really nice and affordable small tubes of E6000 to our glue family. So that's coming up too, okay? So now let's get back to, um, I'm gonna move all of these glues over a little bit. Let's get back to our closure, okay? I'm gonna cut myself, This is and this is why I always give myself so much soft flex. I'm gonna cut this again and I'm going to get myself, how's this zap? The zap is still good, so I'm going to get this zap in here. I'm going to add this zap glue to the interior. Trying not to be too messy. To the interior chain. Very good eye, Trish Perry. I did throw some bobble chain in that little, you can see I had a few little things just hanging around, so I used that bobble chain is in there. Yes, Suzanne, that's a very good observation. Anytime you're using any of these glues, you want to make sure that you're using them in a well-ventilated area because they do all have a definite odor to them. 
So I put just a little bit of zap on the end. And again, everything is laying side by side. And I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to let that sit to the side. Let me open up this, this uh, shot, give myself another little baggie, and I'm going to let that just sit there for a second. Okay? And let me get rid of this um, accident waiting to happen, these glues here. Let's move over while I'm doing that, let's, or while that's sitting, let's move over to actually closing this necklace off and using some jump rings. So, um, I have, this is our circle back chain, and I'm going to cut, I don't know how much, an inch, two inches, I don't know, whatever works for you for the closure. Maybe I'll make it a two inch length, okay? And again, I'll use my faithful Zuron cutters to, let me see if I can get a little more on the shot here, there we go, to cut that chain. And I'm going to add a jump ring to connect it. So that zap glue, Anissa, that's this right here. This zap we carry on beadshop.com. We use it for gluing like leather to metal. Like with this piece that I'm wearing, you guys know my favorite bracelet here, my trail ride. You can see I used that, that clasp and I just used that zap to glue that in. That's what this. Oh, Zoe, that's so nice of you to say. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what? You just, you have to be chill about things not going perfectly because, you know, who cares? We can always find a workaround, right? And I think that's kind of the fun of Free Tip Friday. I try not to be too polished so we can really learn a lot. Um, I also don't have a lot of prep time for it. <laughs> so... You know, whatever. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So, as always, let's use our um, our two uh, pliers here to open this up. This is the 5 millimeter jump ring. I'm going to put it on the end here and on the end here. We want to have a lot of movement there so things move around nicely. And we're going to close it up. And I've used a bent chain nose and a regular chain nose. Okay, just like that. Now, my thinking is the other side is just going to connect with this lobster claw. And this lobster claw will come in and around and go wherever you want it to go on this chain. And so you can see, see here how that just fits right in there. And you can choose any chain you like, you guys, and any clasp you like, as long as, got a little bit of glue residue there, as long as the hook of the lobster claw fits in nicely and has, as Janice says, air. Okay, so that's ready to go. All right, let's revisit our friend over here with, um, with our uh, zap. Now you can see as I kind of play with this and flick this around that zap has actually glued that soft flex can you guys see that? Right into the crimp. So that bodes well, right? So let's see if we can crimp it. Again, I really want painter's tape but since I don't have it that scotch tape was a little too gummy, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to tighten this up, and let's see if we can get this crimped closed tightly. So my verdict is with the glue, thumbs up with gluing this. I'm going to hold this to the side so you guys can really see. See, it's that little mountain, that little tooth that's going to come in. Let's see if I can turn it so you guys can see it there. That little tooth is going to come up, push that center crimp closed and hopefully hopefully as I emphatically gesture with my hand this is all going to stay together let's see what happens I'll come in and I'm going to press 
I'm pressing kind of at the bottom part of the oval crimp to kind of catch it like that and then I'm going to walk my pliers up and I'm going to take this out of shot for just a second so I can get a little closer to what I'm doing. Hey Janice Kang, how are you? Janice Kang, am I going to see you at Stitches West? Our big Stitches, our big knitting conference is coming up here in Northern California. I can't wait. I also like to knit. I bet we have a lot of knitters out there. If anyone else is going to Stitches, let me know. Um, Trish, that is actually a great idea about lightly hammering it closed. I don't know if that's actually cheating. Um, I think it might actually be a good idea. I may just put this on my bench block and maybe lightly hammer that closed. It's not a bad idea. It kind of fleetingly ran through my mind as well. Um, but I think that this is, and you can see that's closed up pretty well, and you can see where, let me get it just a little bit tighter and then I'll show you how that closed up. But I think that with this crimp, what my non-scientific findings have told me is that, um, that I really do want the uh, glue in there so that this doesn't fall out. Okay. Oh yeah, that's true. I could put the class barely inside a baggie. That's a good idea too, and it'll help it not. Um, I think the rubber mallet, Anna, might not be hard enough to um, to like hammer this down. I might need a little more oomph behind it. But I think it looks pretty good. And let me really pull on this. This isn't. I don't think this is going anywhere. That's good. Oh, your homework. So Janice, you're taking a Stitches West class. That's awesome. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, and Zoe, you're going too. That's awesome. I think I'm going to go on maybe Saturday. I think we're going to go. I think hopefully Emily is going to go with us too. Um, so we'll see. So if you guys are going to Stitches, um, maybe we can meet up. It'll be fun. So let me go ahead and put the clasp and stuff on this side and then I'm going to finish this up and I'll post a photo. I'll put all of the stuff that I've used on the blog and stuff like that. Um, um, and you guys will have a good, a, good, um, a good idea of what I've used. Yeah, Stitches West is so, so fun. It's such a good time. It's in Santa Clara, California. Um, it always happens at the end of February every year. Steaking, you're going to steak. I have a sweater that needs a steak. So I'll get to it. I'm the world's slowest knitter, and I'm not kidding you at all. I'm such a slow knitter, but I love to knit. Uh, there we go. We've closed that off. So this is all ready. See that closure? And then I'll do this one on the other side and we will be good to go. So I, I think that's not too bad for, um, for our piece. I'll go ahead and hold it up. Yeah, I've got five strands on here, Anna, and I think five looks nice, though you could make this even more lush and put in 10. I think in this crimp, I could get probably up to 10 strands of soft flex in here. Okay, and Anissa, I think to my understanding, at least in my experience with this, we uh, for zap, there's just the zap uh, no drip gel. Um, but it's nice. So let me move this around. Maybe I'll hold it up so we can see. Um, Trish Perry, steaking is a knitting term, and that means that you've knitted a sweater in the round, and then you're ready to add a... Um, you're ready to add a zipper or some buttons or whatever, and you cut that. I'm trying to move this around, you guys, so bear with me here. You cut that um, project, you cut it open, and uh, you apply your zipper or your buttons or whatever. You do all kinds of fun things like, um, I don't know, you, you sew on either side of where you're going to cut and stuff like that. So it's a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> 
that you're actually cutting open a sweater that you've spent, in my case, three years knitting. Um, but it's also kind of fun and empowering. So um, look it up online. It's, it's kind of fun and exciting. So, um, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Oh, there goes Ivan. You just saw Ivan pass by us. Um, you can see, let me hold this up. And we can see how this might look or is starting to shape up a little bit here. There we go. And you can see how this multiple strand, that's looking pretty good, right? Ivan, people are saying hi to you. They saw you. Ivan's not listening to me. But I think it looks all right, right? Right? It's kind of fun. Multiple strands, more strands would look good too. So we'll see what shakes out for the blog. We'll finish this up and I'll post it so you guys can see it. But I think it's pretty fun. I think it's a pretty cool, uh, a pretty cool project. Also really good for bridal, I think too. So you guys had a question about what I was wearing. Uh, I showed you these coin earrings I was wearing earlier. The necklace um, that I was wearing, um, oh thanks Barb, I'm so glad. Well, welcome for your first time and I hope you will be back with us. Just to mention, um, before I talk about this necklace, you can find all of our Free Tip Fridays, just like you can find all of our Facebook Lives. You can find those on our YouTube channel, beadshop.com. If you, there's a playlist that says Free Tip Friday, just search those. You'll see them all from start to finish. Um, you can also find them archived on our website, beadshop.com. If you go to our Facebook Live page, there's one little picture there in all of the Facebook Lives that say Free Tip Friday. If you click on that, all of the videos will come up and you can um, just click through. Also, if you go to our blog called The Bead Table, you can type in the search box, Free Tip Friday, and all of the blogs that I've written that support Free Tip Friday uh, will show up in the search, so you can also search things that way. There's a whole bunch of really fun projects, if I do say so myself, that have come up um, with Free Tip Friday. Um, so you can see this necklace that I'm wearing today, this is an old style Kate Richburg. Um, it's some metal beads uh, that I've made that are wire wrapped. And this is actually a project that I'm going to be teaching at our second annual bead retreat. Um, some of you uh, who are watching maybe were even in our first annual bead retreat. Um, and uh, our second one, it's coming up in September. And next Wednesday, the 14th on Valentine's Day, um, the uh, sale goes live for the the bead retreat so if you haven't done so already sign up for our newsletter so you get notification of that um, but it's going to be super fun uh, it's in San Juan Batista California here on the beautiful California near the California coast um, we've been having pre-sale go on we open pre-sale up to our attendees from last year so it is filling but there will be plenty of seats available uh, for those of you who want to join us it's September I think 14th through 17th of this year 2018 and as I say pre-sale will go up probably around 8 a.m. or so on uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time um, uh, on the 14th of February next Wednesday so we would love to have you guys. Um, the, the theme is called The Best of Both Worlds, and Emily and Janice and I are mixing the world of wire wrapping and the world of stringing all together. So it's going to be really, really fun. On Friday night, I'm teaching this beaded thing where we do some folded beads and we embellish them. On Saturday, Emily is doing some wire work, um, things from her craftsman necklace, um, as well as I'm going to be teaching clasps. We're going to be doing some hammering. I'm going to be bringing all of the heavy equipment so you don't have to bring a bench block and hammer. And then Sunday, Janice is going to take over and help pull all of these pieces together by sharing her techniques in knotting and stringing. So it's going to be a great, fun-filled, like, two and a half days. We're really, really looking forward to it. So that's my story i'm sticking to it well thank you everybody yes marcia we already have your sign up 
It'll be great. Um, we would really, really love to have you join us. It's something that we're going to continue to do, and we're also looking at perhaps expanding. I know some of you who are on the east coast of the United States would also like to join us, but maybe don't want to travel that far. So hopefully um, we'll be expanding expanding um, those up as well. All right, you guys. Well, first timers, thank you so much for joining us here on Free Tip Friday. Um, we hope that you can join us for our Facebook Lives on Wednesdays as well. You can go shop and hop over to beadshop.com, sign up for our newsletter, and we'll be able to stay in touch with all of these great tips and techniques that we share with you. All right, you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. I know we went a little bit long today, but I've missed you the past two weeks. I've missed you. So uh, I'll see you next Wednesday for a really great um, Valentine's project that I have cooked up. It has to do with wire, which is going to be really fun. Um, and I'll see you guys then. Have a great creative weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.